going to continue preaching about the heart this morning. Amen. And um felt God lay on my heart to preach on the heart for a time. Amen. And um feel like I'm going to continue to preach on it for however long the Lord would have me to preach on it. Amen. So Matthew 5 and 8, we're going to talk about a pure, a pure heart this morning. A pure in heart this morning. Amen. Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you would just pray with me. Lord, I thank you for bringing us here. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to anoint my lips of clay, God. For without your anointing, I can do nothing, God. But by thine anointing, all things are possible, God. Have your will and your way. Speak, God, today as only you are able to do, God. Help me to declare what you have given me to declare to the church today. That we may always be pure in heart. Oh God, that we always live live with a pure heart, Amen. Towards you, towards your word, Lord, towards uh, towards all you would have us to be. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. You can be seated. Man, I'm going to talk to you today, as I said, about the pure in heart this morning. Amen. Uh, or, or a pure heart. Amen. We've been talking about a preached, uh, amen, last Sunday morning, about a Sunday night, I think it was, on the, about the, about a, a, a burning heart being extinguished. Amen. Not letting our burning heart get extinguished by things. Amen. I preached to you Wednesday night about a sincere heart. Amen. I felt led, amen, today to preach about a pure heart. Amen. We must have. Amen. We must not let our burning heart go out. Amen. We must have a sincere heart. Amen. But we must have a pure heart. Amen. Where I read to you Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Amen. Only the pure in heart's going to see God. Amen. I, amen. I've been I've talked to you about revival before. I talked to you about. Uh, amen. I started preaching about the heart. Amen. I mentioned this I think Wednesday night. Amen. Or maybe last Sunday night. Amen. By preaching about the heart, I do believe we're still addressing revival. Amen. All the conditions must be right to experience revival. Amen. Every condition in the church should uh, must be right uh, before we will experience revival. Amen. I pray for a great uh, uh, worldwide revival. Amen. Do uh, will we have it? I don't know, but I do know I'm going to pray for it. Amen. And see. God for it. Amen. I pray thousands of souls come to God. Amen. I trust God that we will see a mighty move of God. Amen. Of His of His elect people one more time before His coming. Amen. But amen. Every condition must be right. Amen. Where must we start to get these conditions right? That is the heart. Amen. If the heart's not right, we will never experience a move of God. Amen. If the heart's not right, this church is not going to function the way that it should. Amen. If the heart's not right, you will never see God in a move of God or you'll never see in the end. Amen. Without a pure heart with after Him. Amen. A pure heart is vital to making in God. Amen. The heart must be right. I preached to you on Wednesday night, but it must be about it must be sincere. We must be sincere after God. Amen. But if we're going to be sincere after God, we must have a pure heart for Him. Amen. Our heart must be pure, not tainted. What does pure mean? It means to make bright. Amen. It means choice, chosen, cleansed. To be clean, clearly polished, amen, to show self love purified, amen, to purge out, amen, it means not mixed with any other substance, clean from all, uh, from all, uh, 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 clean and free from impurities, amen. We must not be mixed with any other substance, we cannot be mixed, our heart cannot have mixture in it and still please God, our heart cannot have mixture in it and still see God. Our hearts cannot have mixture and still see revival. 
Amen. We must be pure in heart today. Amen. As I read to you. Amen. Those great words that Jesus said in, the, in His Beatitudes. Amen. Well, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. Uh, Psalms 24 and uh, 4. He that maketh clean his hands and pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity and to sworn de deceitfully. Amen. We must have this pure heart. Not at all has this pure heart. Amen. Uh, amen. Jeremiah. So what does Jeremiah say about the heart? A heart without God. Amen. A heart without Him. Amen. This is uh, this is what the heart is. Amen. It is. Amen. The heart of man. Amen. It is deceitful. Amen. Above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. The heart of man is desperately wicked without Jesus. Amen. I'm going to tell you. People say follow your heart. Absolutely not. Follow God. Amen. As He leads your heart. Amen. That's the most important thing that we can do. Amen. Because there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. If I follow what this, what this flesh wants, it's going to lead me wrong every single time. It's going to lead me astray every single time. But I follow this pure heart. Amen. I follow through it with a pure heart towards God. He's going to lead me right every time. You say, I'm praying for an answer. Amen. I'm seeking for an answer for stuff. I had a lot of people tell me. Amen. Well, I'm thinking about doing this this and amen this is what I want to do amen I'm not sure if it's the right thing but this is what I think I'm going to do because this is what I want to do amen that's not a pure heart towards God amen a pure heart is every single time it's going to say I'm going to do what he wants me to do amen first of all a pure heart is living separated a separated life from this world James 1 27 amen says a pure religion undefiled before God and a father is this hey this uh, 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 to visit the fathers and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Pure religion, a pure heart comes only through a separation from this world. Amen. We cannot be in this world. We cannot live of this world. We cannot live like this world and still have a pure heart after him. He must live a separated life. Our life must be different. Our heart must be different than this world's heart. We must act different, walk different, talk different. Amen. Because we have a pure heart after Him. Amen. It is complete separation from this world. Anything less than complete separation is not a pure heart. I read to you one of the definitions. Amen. Just a powerful definition that spoke to me. Amen. As I told you. Not mixed with any other substance. Amen. If our heart is mixed of any other substance. Amen. Anything else. Amen. It is not a pure heart. Amen. Anything else. It would be completely unpure. Amen. So we must know that our life is so completely separated from this world. But not only separated, amen, from the things that we just call this world and this is of the world, but our lives must be completely living a separated life from self. Amen. If we're going to have a pure heart, I must live separated from this flesh. Amen. That's why Paul wrote the words, such powerful words, I die daily. Amen. I mean, people say, well, he said he repented every day. No, that's not what he said. Amen. I do believe he died daily to himself that he didn't have to repent every single day. He lived holy and righteous because he died daily and separated himself Amen. Uh, separated. Amen. And died to himself that Christ may live. Amen. This pure heart is not going to be from us. Amen. As I've told you before, my dad and different preachers have said, Amen. All that, Amen, you'll read so much about you now. Amen. It's all about us. Amen. The people say it's all about people. Amen. It's not all about people. Amen. You'll read, look at Joel Osteen's books. Amen. Most of them, Amen. Every one of them. Amen. You'll see, Amen. Unless he got some new ones. I don't don't know nothing about. Amen. Every day Friday. Amen. That's about self. My best life now. Becoming a better you. Amen. It's all about. Amen. Glorifying self. Amen. It must not be about self. A pure heart is separated from me. Amen. I must die that he may live. Amen. 
Amen. That is a necessity. That is a pure heart. That I die and He lives. Amen. And what uh, what a tainted, mixed heart it would be for me. I'm going to tell you. Now, Jeremiah said, my heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. My heart is deceitful above all things. My heart is going to lead me the wrong way every single time. But when I come and I die and get that pure heart of Him, amen, I will live a life after Him. Amen. We must live a passionate life after a pure heart. Amen. Proverbs 22, 11. He that love pureness of of heart for the grace of his lips the king shall be his friend but he said who he that loveth pureness of heart amen we must love pureness of heart amen I want to tell you I would that I amen to fall in love with having a pure heart amen what do we need to be passionate after this amen I preached a message about passionate about purity before amen as I was driving down the road going to preach on the street somewhere, I believe it was. I was right behind, amen, a truck, amen, a milk truck, amen, for, uh, for, uh, and for the corner stores, the Valero corner stores, and it said on that truck, or it's Oak Farms, or one of them, amen, it says, it said, and the milk truck said, passionate about purity. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the Lord dealt with me. We must be passionate about living a pure life before God. We must be passionate about having a pure heart before Him. We must be passionate about living a separated life for Him. Amen. Amen. We must be passionate about this. Amen. If we're passionate about a pure heart, we will be passionate about hating sin. Amen. We must keep a passion, a passionate heart after Him. It spoke of Jesus in Hebrews. I've quoted it many times. Amen. I already already quoted it in a series of messages. Amen. But Jesus hated sin and loved righteousness. Amen. If we're going to have a pure heart after God, amen, we're going to be pure in heart. We must hate sin and love righteousness. We must forsake all sin and live free from sin and love Him and keep Him first in our life. Amen. We must be passionate about His Word. I know I talk about it often. Amen. I've talked about it in every message in this. Amen. But we must keep a passionate about the pure Word of God. If we're going to be, live a pure life, we must stay passionate about this. I might even read these. I can't remember exactly which ones I read. Psalms 119, Wednesday night. But it says, My zeal hath consumed me because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. Amen. I'm going to tell you, if His Word is very pure, therefore we must love it. I do believe we have a 100% untainted pure Word of God in the King James Bible. That's why I make it such a big deal about the King James Bible. We have a pure, unmixed, untainted, perfect, infallible Word of God and we must live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth and that is this King James Bible amen we man it is very pure and we must be passionate about that if we're going to have pure hearts after him we're going to be passionate about his words passionate about his commandments amen he said in John 14 15 I've mentioned it a lot the other night so not going to get great detail of this but if you love me keep my commandments amen if we're going to have a pure heart talk to you about a sincere heart we're going to have a pure heart we're going to have to have a pure heart after his commandments. We cannot not we cannot disobey his commandments and still yet have a pure heart. We must love him by loving to keep his commandments. Amen. We must have a pure heart by purely obeying him. Amen. The only way that we will, that we will ever stay pure is through a prayer life. Amen. I'm going to tell you if I don't seek God, amen, regularly, if I don't get on my knees regularly and seek the face of God, I will not have a pure heart. Brother Bo said this morning, amen, he don't want to go and he don't think anymore. Amen, Sunday school. But if he lost his prayer life, 
It would very easily come easy, easily to start slipping on these things. Amen. And going back. It would. I'm going to tell you, if I, if I cease to pray, it is very easy to let the enemy come in. Amen. And taint my heart. It is very easy to let mixture come in. We know that God hates mixture. Amen. For He told the church of Laodicea, I wouldn't even be cold or hot. For if you are lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Amen. I do believe the only way way that we'll ever stay pure is through seeking the face of God. Right. Amen. We're going to see revival. It's going to come through prayer. Amen. What 2 Chronicles seven fourteen said. I've quoted it many times. But if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways then I'll forgive their sins and hear amen. Hear their prayer. Amen. And heal their land. I'm going to tell you if we man, it must be. Amen. We must pray and seek God for a pure heart. Amen. We don't have to have sin in our life. But if we have anything that is tainted or mixed in our life, it's going to come through prayer. Getting it out. The Bible said that any man that comes with a broken and a contrite spirit, he will no wise to, uh, cast him out. Amen. It's going to, we're going to have to come and seek God. Amen. And call on Him if any impurities in our life to get rid of. Amen. That's one thing prayer is for. Absolutely. Prayer is not just for that. Amen. Prayer is for sweet fellowship with Him. Amen. I cannot have a sweet, pure relationship with God without a pure, amen, sweet, pure that's a prayer life before Him. Amen. As I've often said, amen, I cannot have much of a relationship with my wife. Amen. I'm not going to have a pure marriage. Amen. It's going to be a tainted marriage eventually if I don't communicate with my wife. Amen. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to have a pure relationship and a pure heart before God if I'm not purely seeking His face. Amen. That is a necessity to walk with Him. Amen. You can't have a pure heart without having a pure mind. Amen. Amen. Yeah, amen. I know. Amen. It's going to start there at a pure heart, but it's going to go. Amen. A pure mind's going to come right along with it. Amen. Philippians 4 and 7 through 8. Amen. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through, Jesus, uh, through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a, uh, are uh, are uh, uh, things are of good report. If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. He said, "Amen." The, uh, the, he shall keep your hearts and my minds. Amen. We will not keep a pure heart without a pure mind. We must have a pure mind before Him. Amen. Uh, Peter three and one says to uh, Amen. Uh, 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 this second epistle beloved I write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Amen. It's going to take a pure heart to have a pure mind. But if we don't have a pure mind we don't have a pure heart. We must purge our mind. The Bible says cast out every evil imagination. Amen. We must cast out that evil imagination that will keep our hearts pure. Amen. The things that we meditate on, the things we think on, will taint our heart. Amen. The things that we look on, if we will, amen. Amen. There's sometimes we have no choice but to see things. Amen. I'm going to tell you when I go preach a college campus, amen. Not every girl is dressed modest there. Amen. But I'm going to tell you, I don't have to dwell on that. I can cast out every evil imagination. Amen. I'm going to hear the worst filthy words on a college campus. Amen. I don't have to keep that in my mind. Amen. I want to see, amen, some of the most violent people out preaching on the streets. Amen. I don't have to keep that in my mind. Amen. Sure, we should beware and keep away from these things to the best of our ability. Amen. Uh, amen. I do believe God would have us to evangelize. So we're going to see these things. Amen. But amen, that's why I don't turn on the TV and watch this un pure, filthy garbage because amen, amen, I don't want to take my mind and my heart. Amen, but we must cast out every evil imagination. A pure heart will always uh, will pro always produce 
pure communication. And our tongue can't come under control through a pure heart. Who can tame the tongue? The Bible says, I do believe it teaches in the Word of God. The Holy Ghost will tame. I know well, it will amen, tame our heart and our tongue before Him. If we have a pure heart before Him, it will produce uh, amen, pure communication. Amen. We know that 1 Corinthians 15.33 Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupteth good manners. Amen. Luke 6.45 A good man out of, a good, out of the good treasure of heart bringeth forth that which, uh, that which is good. Amen. And the evil man out of uh, that which uh, the treasure of his heart bringeth forth uh, that which is evil for uh, a man for the uh, uh for, uh, for of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. I read that to you the other day. Amen. Matthew 20, uh, 12, 34. Oh, ye generation of vipers, how can you uh, uh, be uh, be evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Amen. A, as, a, as a pure heart will uh, produce pure communication. An uh, unpure heart will produce tainted. Amen. And wicked communication. Impure communication. Amen. If you have a problem gossiping, it's probably because you don't have a pure heart after God. If you have a problem with a filthy mouth, amen, why would it be? It's probably because you have you don't have a pure heart after God. Amen. If you'll have a pure heart after God, God will completely change your communication. Amen. Matthew, amen. And the last thing is, amen, the Lord is coming back after a pure church where I read to you in Matthew 5 and 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. Only them that lives pure in heart is going to see Him in the end. Go to the Lord. is going to come back for a pure church. Amen. I, I quoted it all, quoted it all the time, and I, amen. I don't quote some of the same verses I quoted, but amen. This all has to do with the heart. Amen. That he may present it to himself. A glorious church. Not heavy spot or recall any such thing, but it be holy without blemish. God is coming for a bride. Jesus is going to come receive his bride. Amen. That is pure and righteous. Amen. That has a pure heart. For him. Amen. I'm going to tell you, if I knew my wife when she walked down that aisle on July 28th of 2012, if I knew she didn't have a pure heart for me, I wouldn't have married her. Amen. But I knew without a doubt. Amen. Amen. Through the will, uh, praying for the will of God. Amen. Amen. And communicating, or, uh, communicating with her. Amen. She, I knew she had a pure heart after me. Amen. Five years later, she has that same pure heart. I have that same pure heart towards her. Amen. I knew when that bride walked down that aisle, he has, she had a pure heart for me. I'm going to tell you, the, the Lord knows who are His. Amen. The Lord knows who has a pure heart before Him. And nobody's going to escape by to be that bride of Christ except them that are pure in heart. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Without, Amen. The Bible says without holiness no man shall see God. That is that pure heart. Amen. That's the only way we're going to truly see God is through this pure heart. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Come to these altars and seek the face of God.